So today is going to be a jam-packed video because on top of building floor two of Naboo, which I have quite a few good ideas for, and we'll get to that later on in the video. So if you'd like to skip straight forward to the Lego City, I'll leave a timestamp on screen. But first things first, if you've watched any of the recent videos on the channel, you'll know that the subscriber count has been going up so, so quickly. So I have updated the black to show it we're now on 2.7k and i think it was 2.71 so chances are we might not be on 2.8k but if you haven't already subscribed please do about five percent of you are subscribed so if we can up that to ten percent that's like 5k subscribers which is crazy of course we've got the big goals for 10k for 100k as well that one's a bit further off but we'll get there eventually and I've also found the two blue brackets. You might remember I rebuilt the fish tank creator three in one for my fiance because I was taking it out of the city and that is now on display as well. But the blue brackets were actually holding up the neck of my Captain Rex. It doesn't really make sense. Don't try to think about it too much because the neck is actually the black pauldron that Rex wears. And I have an abundance of black and gray and because there's like 30 plus brackets in that set, I also had a load of blue but it would have made so much more sense to use black in the first place. So I have replaced the four of them with black pieces and that is sorted again. The fish tank now joins the animal crossing display and the creator three in one dragon in our other room. But today I actually took a trip to Morrison's before filming that. Didn't really film much while I was there, but I did see there is a special Lego Star Wars magazine here in the UK if you haven't picked up that May 4th Titan Scepter promo, which is a really, really cool build. We have looked at that on the channel before, and there was also two poly bags for the Marvel, well, the Spider-Man magazine. And the next issue comes with Gwen, which I have Spider-Man, I have Miles Morales, and I have a few other Spider-Man characters, but I don't yet own that Gwen. And that Gwen seems to be the one from the Daily Bugle, They've done that with a few characters and had the exclusive or rare Daily Bugle versions in the magazine, which is really, really awesome. So that's another Daily Bugle character I will be getting. Maybe we'll have to build some sort of modular or front of the Daily Bugle for the city at some point, because that would be really, really cool. But on top of that, I also got the Star Wars magazine and I did pick up a few extra as well to be selling to all of you. Unable to pick this up in the country you are in. So I will be talking about it tomorrow because I actually have the next three magazine minifigures. So we can take a look a long time in the future and take a look at the actual magazine itself as well. Because as I only have a few of these to sell to all of you, I thought we might as well take a look at the actual magazine and at least show off the comics so you can read them in your own time. On top of this, my fiance did also pick up the Lego Minecraft magazine. So I'll probably include that in tomorrow's video. And there's a cool witch and a cat in this. I quite like this. It's actually the same weight as the Star Wars one, even though this only includes one poly bag and there's two poly bags on the Lego Star Wars one. I'm not going to be spoiling what the second one is, but you'll find out in tomorrow's video. And on top of this, I'm still waiting for my new lights to arrive. I think I put on screen at the start of yesterday's video that I had finally ordered lights in editing that video and they're meant to be arriving anytime today but it's any time before 10 p.m. You gotta love Amazon delivery sometime. And there's also another Lego set coming with them, but they could be showing up at any moment. I really don't know when they're arriving. So most of this video will be shot once they have arrived. And until then, I guess I just gotta start work on the Naboo modular and I'll let you know what I've done when the lights arrive. So the lights have actually arrived. And what you're seeing now is with the brand new lights. So I've got to play with them a little bit. I've literally just put them up and this is what it looks like, which if we were to compare it, I'll try and leave the start of the video unedited if it looks good enough. I'm actually just starting editing it right now. And so far it doesn't look too bad. So hopefully I can leave that unedited so you can see the difference with the lights. One on me, one behind me, and it's gonna make a huge difference on that desk. Cause the only window in the room is over on that wall and my desk is over on this wall. So standing between the sunlight and the Lego models is myself for the most part. So there's absolutely no light reaching it. And now we've got two brand new lights. The old lights were soft boxes and I'll only speak briefly on this because if you have any questions, ask them in the comments and I've got a Q&A coming up that I will answer any production based questions really that you have. So let me know any in the comments, light related or otherwise 
These are LED panels. I've seen a few other YouTubers, especially around the Lego theme, opt for panels over soft boxes. First off, we've only got a little room here, so these panels are tiny compared to what the soft boxes are, and we can always get soft boxes for these LED panels. A lot of people think you have to choose, but you're only really choosing between the bulb or the panel. The panels seem to be a much more harsher light, which eliminates all of the shadows that even the soft boxes were leaving on the LEGO models. So I really hope this looks better for reviews, and I guess I could use one of the LED panels to take photos of the other LED panel and overlay it. Hopefully you can see just what I mean. But I also got the LEGO set that I ordered from Amazon, and the box is a little beat up, but I did get quite a hefty reduction. Well, I think it was quite a decent price for the beat up box. So you can't see exactly what it is. I will try and blur this out best I can. But if you want to take a shot at what you think I'll be reviewing, you can see the size of the box. It's Star Wars, so it's a mostly gray box, of course. Let me know in the comments what you think it is and come back on Sunday for the review of the set. And as requested, this is actually a set that you've asked me to review. Well, some of you anyway, and I will be building mocks with this as well. There's quite a few ideas that I've got to run through. But in terms of today's video, because we are now probably about halfway through the video, we have nothing to show for the LEGO City, and that is the whole point of today's video. So let's get the 16 by 16 panel down. I'll probably run through it once I have it built. So I'm gonna go build this and edit the start of the video, and hopefully it won't be too long before I can show you the finished modular. I didn't realize just how hot I looked in the last shot, but these panels definitely are keeping it cool in the room here. And as you can see, you can actually see the model this time. It's a lot nicer looking at a desk with lights on it. I got a comment on the last video to add some of the Advent N ones, and I think it was in place of this Planet series here because it is quite a bit big and takes up pretty much the entire modular. But I do really like that in this. What I've done is added two of the Advents as smaller drones and vehicles, or perhaps this is a bigger model in general, and you can see there is some sort of mechanic perhaps working on the larger N1. So I appreciate all the comments that I left on the video because I really think these N1s help to fill out the rest of the space. I think I moved this crate as well to fit this one in. And I think it really does just fill up the space very, very nicely. These are from the 2012 advent calendar, which actually is the same advent as I believe this third droid is on the left here. So that's quite nice. It ties in the Lego City to my Gonk army, I guess, to some extent. And then, of course, it goes well with the Planet series. They're not too different from each other. I mean, there's a lot of different pieces used, but on the side, you can see we've got the two cones back to back. Then we've got the bar at the back with a cone on it. There's a lot of similar techniques downsized for these smaller advent builds and i think that goes for pretty much any year of the star wars advent calendars at least i know a few of the other ones are a bit different harry potter's disappointing this year but we'll be looking at the star wars advent in september so now it's time to take a look at the second floor which is padme's throne room with a little reference to otagunga as you can see we don't only just have the throne room which has another arch naboo is very archy in its architecture so it actually makes sense to have this open and a bit like Watto's wears but I'm going to close up the Tatooine Tower and we also have a little Otagunga scene down here which I think we'll take a look at first you can see a micro scale Otagunga built and then we have a Naboo Bongo and you guessed it 2012 Star Wars Lego Christmas Advent that was a lot of words, not all in the right order, but it's the same advent that the gonk over there comes from and also the two micro N1s. So it ties into the tower quite nicely and I really like how the, just the micro scale scene turned out. You might recognize this somewhat tunnel of a shape and it's because I've taken it more or less straight from the old Lego City Aquarium. So that looks really, really nice. But I think the biggest focus of this floor is definitely the throne room. And we do have Padme staring out the window. I'm gonna try and get some really cool shots of that for Instagram. So keep your eye out for that. It's an 
iconic painting. I'm pretty sure they use a painting in the movie. So it's a really, really nice piece of art. And you can see that I do have the throne room chair and table. Technically, I think Padme is in one of the corridors, but it's the same big window behind. So it does work for that scene. And then we got a few smaller windows on the side so that they can see to this fish tank like build of Otter Gunga. But it's for all the doorways and different rooms that break off of the throne room. We've got the windows to reference. A few different style bricks at the front. You can see the round one by ones either side. And that pretty much covers the whole of the throne room. This will go on top of the Naboo hangar. And I don't actually remember what the next floor is going to be, but it's going to be our final floor and then we're going to work on a roof. So it's only going to be 10 by 16 studs wide, which is a bit smaller, which might make it a bit hard to do the roof. But perhaps what we can have is a balcony out the front and then square it off so that it's a 10 by 10 at the back. And hopefully we can get the roof to work on top of that. So this is going to be so fun. It's a different shape. We are no longer squaring it off now. As I said, we're going to have that six by 10 balcony at the front. So we're only going to get a smaller cube stacking up at the side. It's still quite cubey compared to what I would like, but the next tower is going to be completely different. It's going to look so, so good. And I'm very happy to get continuing with these Star Wars modulars. So let me know what you think of this down in the comments. And that is all for today's video. Again, it's been a long one. Hopefully the camera is in focus this time, but these new lights are really, really cool. And I mean, quite literally cool. They're cool to the touch. They don't get hot. I've had them on for quite a while now and my phone gets hotter than these lights. The only thing I've got to remember is to turn the fan off when I'm recording. So I do apologize for the audio at the start, but I think today has been a success. We've continued building the boot. I cannot wait for next week. I definitely think I'm going to be fiddling around. There's a few extra bits I want to add as well outside this tower, out the front and incorporate it a bit better with the city. And I'm taking some ideas from the Lego Skywalker Saga game, actually, to add a bit more of the Naboo feel to the streets in front of the tower. Something I'm going to do with all the other modulars as well. But I'd love to hear your thoughts and opinions and what else you'd like to see in the city. Leave them in the comments. And thank you to the person who said about adding the little N1s. I think that was a great idea. And then led to me adding a micro bongo as well. I was always going to build Otagunga. But then I saw the bongo on the advent and thought I had to add that. So thank you so much for all your comments, especially on that short. We smashed half a million views. It's probably not far off 600,000 now. I haven't really checked on it. And 300 comments has pretty much been hit already. So I am sorry I'm not able to answer all your comments, but I am still taking a look as my notifications are just scrolling past. Thank you so much for the support. I hope you enjoyed the video. Stay tuned for the magazine review tomorrow and Sunday for that Lego set review. You're not gonna wanna miss it. I'm really excited, especially with some recent Star Wars news. I'm really excited to be building it. There's a little spoiler to what it is. Thank you so much for making it to the end of the video. I'm gonna edit this, upload this, and take some really cool images of this mock. And that is all for today. May the bricks be with you always.